God, we thank you today, God. We come before your holy throne. God, we just give you all of the praise and all of the honor. And God, all of the thanks, oh God, that you have allowed us, oh Father, to come before you. A holy God. A loving God. A caring God. A forgiving God. A mercy God. A God who watches over us all. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity, Father, that we get to dwell in the sanctuary. We thank you, Father, for your ability, Father God, to keep us. We thank you, Father, for the man of God of this house. We pray blessings be upon him, God. We thank you for the word, Father, that is rich, God, in him, O oh, Father. And because of you, Father, we come with an expectation. An expectation, Father, not just to hear your word, God, but an expectation, Father, that as we hear your word, Father, that it speaks to our hearts. And, Lord, we ask that you will give us the ability, Father, to apply it to our lives. Because what we understand, Father, that you are God, Father, who wants us to do better. So we're here today saying, Lord, have your way in us. Have your way, God, through us, so oh, Father. Use us, so oh, Father, God, as your vessels in this earth. Use us, God, to change lives, Father, to speak a word unto a people, Father, God, who need you. So, God, we thank you for your salvation. We thank you for the stripes, oh, God, that you bore on the cross, oh, Father. God, it's only because of you, Father, that we stand before you today, God, and we can cry, our Father. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Father, we thank you for those, oh, Father, who are joined with us today. We speak blessings upon them, oh, God. God, we thank you, Father God, that they are inclined to hear what you have to say. And Lord, we pray, Father, that they will get understanding today of what it is that you will speak unto their lives. We thank you, Lord, for your glory. We thank you, Lord, for your anointing, God. We thank you, Lord, for your grace on today. We thank you, God, even for the people of this house today. God, the spoken word church, God, we speak blessings over them today, God. We speak blessings over their families, oh God. We thank you, Father God. Hallelujah, God that you are keeping them, O oh Father. We are reminded today, God, that you said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, God, shall abide under your shadow, God. And God, is you, Father, that we will trust, God, knowing, Father, God, hallelujah, God, that your angels, your angels are kept about us, O oh Father. So we praise you on today. And Father, we Ask that you will join us today in this place. We welcome you, God. We welcome your presence in this place, God. Because we know without you, Father, we are nothing. And Lord, we lift up every house of God, every ministry all over the world, Father God, that's representing you on today. God, we say bless them today, God. Bless the people, Father God. Hallelujah, that you have given into their hands, oh God. We thank you today, God, that they are prospering, oh Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, that you, Father, you will add, Father God, to their lives. You will add, Father, to their ministries. Father, we thank you that provision is made in the name of Jesus, God. For each and every one of them, we lift up our very own Pastor Valerie today and the CCI family all over the world. We speak blessings unto their lives, blessings into their ministries, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for giving some 30, God. We thank you for 
giving some 60. We thank you for giving some 100 fold today. God, we thank you for taking us, oh God, from glory to glory today, God. And we are excited, oh Father, God. Hallelujah, God, that you are causing us, oh Father, to go up, Father, to go higher in you, Father. God, we thank you, Father, for your word, God. We thank you for our own time word today, God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for your urgency. Now is the time. Now is the time, hallelujah, for you to come running back unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Now is the time for those of you who don't know him as Lord and Savior to come. Hallelujah. His arms are extended wide. Hallelujah. And he's ready to receive you on today. So we say, bless you, Lord. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Let everybody say amen, amen. and amen. To God be the glory on this day. Hallelujah. Before our man of God comes up this morning, I just want to, you may have your seats, I just want to encourage each and every one of us today that Jesus Christ is on the throne. Hallelujah. If you believe that today, I want you to say that with me. Say, Jesus Christ is on the throne. Hallelujah. And I can look around today, hallelujah, I can look at the situations that may be taking place in this world today, and it reminds me, hallelujah, that Jesus is on the throne. Hallelujah. Can you get excited with me today? Jesus is on the throne. Know that you are not alone today, that his promises are true and those promises is that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. If you believe it, say he is with us. He is with us. And we know that he is more with us, hallelujah, than those who are in this world. So I say be encouraged today, hallelujah, as God reminds us that he is with us. Amen. If you would, let's stand on our feet and let's welcome our man of God today. Hallelujah. Pastor Simmons, if you would, come today. Hallelujah. Let's receive our man of God. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you this morning. You may be seated this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We just want to come and say to you that, as First Lady said, Jesus is on the throne. He is the master and he is the king. And without the king, a people will perish because the king gives knowledge unto the people. Amen. God bless you this morning, those that are tuned in and those of you that are here. I pray your strength continue in the Lord, amen, that you stay focused and stable on him in spite of what's happening in society or what's happening in this world. We must be focused on Jesus, amen. Glory to God. I pray continuously for those that God has sent unto us. And the Bible says that he pray not for them that are in the world because those that are in the world have turned their back on Jesus. And we need to get more centered on Jesus, even the more of these days, amen, in our life and in what we're doing in this disposition. Glory to God. So we want to say Jesus is Lord this morning, amen. We want to go over our Psalms 91 and we will read uh, our Psalms 91 this morning glory to god because that is our canopy of protection if you can stand for the reading of our psalms 91. and now for our canopy of protection our psalms 91. 
He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash a foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning in the presence of a life changing, never changing, always consistent, always loving, always truthful, always honest, and always revealing King of King and Lord of Lords. Amen. Glory to God. I pray that you will understand as we continue to move in this disposition of this year. The sense of urgency is now. There are many things that are pulling people away from the love of God. They're being distracted by so many different avenues of the tactics of the adversary, the prince, the power of the air, the rulers that's in high places. Amen. But how many know that we have a king of king that's higher than the rulers and the princes and the powers of the air we have someone that keep you focused on the love and the power and the center joy of God but we must come into the true understanding that we must avail ourselves to the presence of God so the presence of God can dwell even stronger in us do you hear that this morning glory to God I'm so excited because I know the thing that God has shared with us this year now, not just a sense of urgency, but it is a sense of urgency. But in a sense of urgency, you got to have what? Stability. You got to be stable. In a sense of urgency, you got to be stable to keep pressing, to move forward. Like Paul says, I press forward towards the mark of the high calling to become a son of God, a mature one, one that's not evilly moved, shaken or thrown about things that come up against them, not easily moved, shaken, or thrown by what they hear people say about them. Do you hear this this morning? So I encourage you this morning to be strong in the power of his might and the resurrection of his glory. Amen. In the power of his might and in the resurrection of his glory. Because I'm going all the way with the Lord. I don't care who comes, who don't come, who say, who don't say. I'm going all the way with the Lord. Because I am convinced that the Lord is on my side. Amen. If the Lord's on my side, who and what can be against me? You know, it's not a time that you should be up and down. It's a time that you should be consistently in. How are you going to grow? How are you going to mature? How are you going to receive the blessings of God if you come one and then you move back, then you come again, and then you move back? God says you've got to be consistent in his word. That's why he says in 2 Timothy 2 and 15 to study, to show yourself approved unto God. A workman needs not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So this morning, I want to come with the same series that uh, stability in the believer, but I want to come from the standpoint to be stable. Be stable, do not fear. Be stable, do not fall to fear. Do you hear that? Be stable, 
Do not fall to fear. Be stable in your life. Do not fall to fear. Unstability is falling away and fearing things. But God says, be stable. Do not fall to fear. Do not fall to fear because there are a lot of things that has people frightened, have people unstable in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. And if we want to be more like him, we must go back to the center of our love. We must continue to develop spiritual stability in our lives. We must stand firm in the Lord and the power of his might and the resurrection of his glory in the name of Jesus. Let's go and turn our Bibles before we go into in depth of our teaching. Be stable. Do not fear. Do not fall to fear. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18. And I want you to know that God loves you so much that he will never turn you down in spite of what you may believe you have done, what you may believe what was said about you. I want you to know God loves you so much that he is waiting to exhale to give you all the desires of your heart. In the name of Jesus, there is not a time nor a rhyme or a season that God will turn you away if you're pursuing after his love. Do you hear that? Glory to God. Are you there in the book of Proverbs? Proverbs chapter 18. Let me get to the book of Proverbs chapter 18 this morning. Amen. Was there any struggle for you to come to the house of God this morning? That should not have been a struggle to come to the house of God. Because when you come to God's house, you ought to be expecting something that God is going to meet you at your need. Amen. You ought to be expecting God to open up your eyes. You ought to be expecting that God's going to enlarge your heart. You ought to expect that God's going to enlarge your territory. You ought to be expecting your God to do something that you are not able to do your yourself if you just come and say oh well it's just no 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 it's the God of a different day it's a God of a different hour it's a God of a different time it's a God of a different season it's a God of a different like joy in your life every day it's something different with your God my 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 it says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein belongs unto God. You don't belong to yourself. You belong unto the Lord. Glory to God. And he's going to meet your needs. Oh, heavenly father, God, I thank you for the fire that shut up in my bones. God, I ask that you will speak to my lips, speak to my mind, use me as an instrument for your glory. Now, I have studied to show myself approved, God, but I need the Holy Spirit. I need the wisdom of God. I need the counsel of God. Anoint me right now, God, that I may stay in the center of your love and only preach what you say to preach and only say what you say to say unto your people. God, give them ears to hear. Give them a heart to be receptive. But God, I ask that you will bless them, that they may enlighten their eyes, enlarge their heart, that they will step out and know that you are the God of joy, love, peace, and more than enough. So we give it all to you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Are you in the book of Proverbs this morning? Glory to God. Proverbs, the book of what? Wisdom. Proverbs, the book of wisdom. Let's look here in the book of Proverbs and let's look up on in the 10th verse. Let's start at the 10th verse. Hallelujah. It says the name of the Lord is a what? Strong tower. Do you see that? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is what? Safe. See, you are safe when you're with the Lord because the Lord is what? A strong tower. When you're afraid and you feel fear, you need to run into the arms of the Lord because you are safe with the Lord because he is a strong tower. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it are safe. 
God says that you are in a safe place with me. You are protected because of my knowledge of how I made you. When you fall out of who I made you to be and what I desire for you to do and whom I desire for you to become, then you are tossed to and fro by every wind word of doctrine. You're not sure of who you are. You fall prey to fear and you become unstable in your walk. You become unstable in your way. But if you know that I am the law and I am the strong tower, there's strength in me, there's ability in me, there's love in me, there's provision in me, then you will not be tossed to and fro and being unstable in your life because I'm the God of stability. He says, I will never leave, nor will I forsake you. I have never seen the righteous, those that love me and care for me, begging for anything. God says that you are tossed to and fro. Why are you tossed to and fro? Because you focus on difficulties that approach you in life. But God reminds us that he is what? A strong tower. If he is the strength and he is a tower, that tells me that his strength, it reaches to the heavens and it stretches back to the earth. And God can move difficulties, problems and pains and situations in your life out of the way. When you run unto the Lord, Amen. Glory to God. He says the righteous understand and they will always understand how they are to pursue me in the knowledge and the wisdom because I am the God of peace. I am the God that hovers over their life. I'm the God that strengthened them when they feel weak. I am the God that lift them up when they're down. I am the God that shows them I am the true lover of their soul. I made them for myself. And I am the only God that they should serve. So God says that be stable and do not fall to fear. God says, what is fear? I overcome fear. I overcome the world, even by faith. Do you hear this? God tells us if we fall to fear and we fall weak and feeble to fear, and that we don't be stable in the pursuing of the love of God, then we can't pursue the growth of the kingdom of God. We can't expand our minds. We can't expand our hearts. And we definitely can't expand our territory if we don't pursue the love of God. Do you hear this? And if we don't pursue the love of God, we can fall captive and be prone to the captivity of the adversary, the prince and the power of the air. If we're not pursuing what makes us strong in the word of God. Do you hear this? In 2 Timothy, turn that with me. In the book of 2 Timothy, I'm going somewhere this morning. You better get your seatbelts on this morning because God wants to talk to us and he wants to continue to strengthen us. He wants us to be able to stand for the truth and the glory of God. He wants us to be able to praise him in the morning, praise him in the noondays, praise him in the night, praise him when it don't feel right. Just give him all the praise because he is the strong tower. You have to release yourself into the spirit realm of God and let the Lord fight your battles. Glory to God. In the book of 2 Timothy, let's look at 2 Timothy. Let's start in the, in the let's go 2 Timothy. Let's start around the glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's start in the 18th verse. Second Timothy chapter two, second Timothy chapter two, glory to God. And the 18th verse in the 18th verse, are you there with me? He says, who concerning the truth have erred saying that there saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrown the faith of some. 
there was teachers teaching people that the Passover is really not a Passover. They was teaching people that Jesus Christ has no real power to be resurrected or to resurrect your life. What they was doing, they were false teachers teaching people false things about a real God. Do you hear that? And happening today, many people are teaching people or people are reading more books than they read the book about a true living God. And they read books about what man think about God. And it brings them to a false thing that God is not real. Somebody believe me this morning because I'm telling you the truth. And it says again right here, who concerning the truth have erred. Concerning what is truth, they erred. That means they wasn't telling the thing right. They erred in their way. And when you err in your way and when you hear the error, you can become unstable and then you fall prey to fear. You become unstable in your ways. Do you hear this this morning? But God wants us to be encouraged. He wants us to stand strong in the power of his might and in the resurrection of his glory, not our glory, in his glory. That's why it says the Lord is a strong tower. He has strength. Why not hold on to the strength of God? Hold on to the strength of God. And 19 says, nevertheless, regardless of what happened, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth what? Sure. The foundation of God standeth sure. God's foundation is sure, my brothers and sisters. God's foundation will never turn away. God's foundation can never decay. God's foundation will always be real. It will always be truthful. It will always be powerful. And it always will show you that he is God. His foundation is sure. Do you hear this? Oh, you got to catch this this morning. Don't be a lump on the log this morning. You got to be the log that's on the lump. Do you hear that? Glory to God. He says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them. Do you see that? The Lord knoweth them. The Lord knoweth them that are what his. God knows who his. God knows who's going to stand. God knows who's walking in fear. God knows who's walking in doubt. God knows, he said, the Lord knows them that are his. Because when they are his, they're going to serve him when they're his. They're going to honor him when they're his. They're going to adore him when they're his. Obstacles don't bother them. They fall unto him because he's a strong tower. That's right, first lady, lean on Jesus. When I just can't do it, there's a sense of urgency. I got to lean on Jesus. Do you hear that? I got to come into the presence of God who can help me when I can't help myself. And I'm not afraid to come into the presence of God. I'm not afraid to get open and naked before the only wise God that I serve. Because he searches the deep things. He searches your heart. To see what the matter is. You can fake, you can fake me out, but you can't fake God out. Because he already knows. Look at this. Yeah, I'm going to read this again because he said he know them. He says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord know them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ. Depart from iniquity. If you're going to name him and you're going to name him Christ, depart from iniquity, things that are bent, twisted, and turned within you. Depart from them. Do you hear that? Because if we don't depart from them and we don't stand on the foundation and we let fear come in us, then we can't serve God. And when we meet God, he says, I need not know you. Do you hear that? But he wants us to love him that he can say, well done, my good and faithful servants. Stand strong. Do you hear it? And then he goes on to say, 20, are you with me? But in a, but in a great house, do you hear that? In a great house. 
in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. Do you see that? He says in the great house, whatever you build, there's different type of things that's going to take place at that house. He says some of gold, some of silver, some of wood and some of earth, some of honor and some of dishonor. Do you see that? It's all type of things that's in a great house. It's all type of people in a great house. There's all type of looks in a great house. There's all type of conversations in a great house. Glory to God. But God is our strong tower in spite of what's in the house. Do you hear that? Look at this. And then he says in 21, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be what? A vessel unto honor, sanctified, set aside. Sanctification means that you're set aside. And then it says, and meat. Meat is not just what you do. Is meat is pliable and usable. Then God can use you. He can advance you. He can, he can exalt you. He can elevate you. He can pour more wisdom into you, knowledge into you. He can enlighten your eyes that you can see the hope and the calling and, and, the, and, and the inheritance that Jesus Christ has in you. You're ready to move now. You're not ready to draw back. You're ready to expand now. Do you hear it? Listen to this. If a man that humanity therefore purged himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared. Do you see that? And prepared and prepared unto every good work. Do you see that? Then it says flee also useful lusts, immaturity, not experienced, don't know, but trying to do. He says, free from useful lust, but follow what righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. That them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. He says, call out of a pure heart a righteous heart a heart that wants to see God's people advance God a people a, a heart that want to see God's people raise up a heart that want to see God's people be stable do you hear it in the name of Jesus glory to God so let's understand what God is saying we must need, we, we have to fall back in love with Jesus all over again. All over again. Now let's go to Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. In the book of Isaiah, in the book of old, Isaiah 41. My, 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 my. Be stable. Do not fall to fear. Be stable. Don't be unstable. Stability in God. For the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to him and they are safe. We're safe in the arms of God. We're safe in the house of God. We're safe when we listen to the voice of God and the word of God. God gives us instructions because he loves us. God gives us instruction because it keeps us stable. How many know watching too much news? It germinates you. Watching too much news, it fills your mind up to where you begin to believe what they say is more real than what he already had said. We have to protect ourselves on all faucets because what we see around us is really trying to pull us out of truly believing God and trusting God and expanding ourselves into the spiritual realm of God. 
leaving the earth expectations and falling more on the expectations of the rim of the spirit. Paul says, I was like a castaway. What is that? Paul says, I was in the natural, but I tapped into the spirit and I was cast away. I wasn't concerned about my surroundings. I wasn't concerned about the voices. I wasn't concerned about how the people looked. I was a castaway in the spirit. Paul says, are you there in Isaiah 41? 41, let's begin to look. Glory to God. Let's begin to look. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 3. Verse 3. He pursued them and passed safely, even by the way that he had not gone with his feet, who have wrought and done it calling the generations from the beginning. I, the Lord, the first, and with the last, I am he. Do you see that? I am the Lord with the first, and with the last, I am he. The owl saw it and feared. The ends of the earth were afraid, drew near, and came. Do you see that? Glory to God. They helped everyone his neighbor and every one side to his brother. He says, be of good courage. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith and he that smoothed the hammer, him that smote the evil, saying, it is ready for the solder and the fasten it with nails that it should not be moved. Do you see it? should not be moved do not fall to fear he says that he hammered it with what the nails he hammered it do you see that he says again him that smote the anvil saying it is ready for the soldering and he fastened them with what the nails god word is like a hammer hitting on the nail and when the hammer hit the nail it should not be moved. Do you see it? God's word is like a hammer. And a hammer hits a nail. But notice when the hammer hit the nail, the nail never goes in the first time. So God's word is like a hammer. You have to repeat the word. You have to repeat the word. You have to repeat the word. Like the hammer had to keep on hitting the nail. Hit the nail until the nail goes deep. And when the nail goes deep, whatever the nail is in, it does not move. You have to say the word of God over and over and over and over. Until the word of God gets so deep, it begins to hit the mark. And when it hits the mark, it does not move. Do you hear that? And that's what God wants us. He says, faith come by what? Hearing and hearing the word of God. You don't just hear the word of God one time. The word of God has to be spoken, spoken, spoken and spoken and when it's spoken over and over it increases you it brings you to a place of stability where you're not even moved by situations that come your way do you hear that and so he goes on to say my 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 look at this but thou, verse 8, but thou, Israel, art my what servant, Jacob, whom I have what chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men. Therefore, I, therefore, and said unto thee, thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. See, God has chosen you. For purpose. He did not cast you away. He did not destroy me. Neither have he destroyed you. 
For God has chosen you. And if God chose you and God chose me, why not serve the one that can bring us into our destiny because he chose us for greatness? Do you see this? He says, be stable. Don't fear. I chose you. I could have chosen a lot of different people, but I chose you. It's something in you that I see and you have yet to see yourself because you're focusing on the outer rim when you need to be focusing on the inner rim because in the inner rim there is no fear. In the inner rim there is faith. In the outer rim there's much fear. Do you hear that? And then God goes on to say in his word, he says in 10, fear thou not. Do you see that? Fear thou not. Be stable, not unstable. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Do you see that? Be not dismayed. Don't be confused. Don't be unstable. Don't be wishy-washy. He says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will strengthen thee. Not the world. I, God, will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. I will hold thee with thy right hand of my righteousness. God says, I'm going to do this for you because I chose you. I'm going to help thee. I'm going to be with thee. I'm going to hold thee with my right hand because you are right by me and I will not let you fall. I will not let you be afraid, uh, a prey to the adversary. I will not let you be a prey to the world and society. I will not. He says, be not dismayed. Be not confused about what I'm able to do. Many are confused about what God is able to do because the world tell them that God can't do what he says he can do. And they stay stuck. They can't move. But God says, don't be dismayed. Don't be unstable. Fear not. He says, don't be, don't be unstable. Don't have fear in this thing. I'm God and I'm with you. He says, I am the strong tower. Not the world. I'm the strong tower. Who are you focusing on? I am the strong tower. When you feel fear, run to me. It's safe with me. But we begin to run to other people. And they're only going to put you in harm's way. Just because they're older than you don't mean that they're going to give you the safe way. Do you hear this? Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. I want you to write this down. Number one. Number one. God's greatest desire. Is for us to believe in him. And stay stable and consistent. It is God's desire for you and me to believe in him and stay stable and consistent. It is his desire. It's not the world's desire. Because if the world would say they would want you to be unstable. And not consistent in believing him. Do you hear it? Turn to Romans 10 and 4. Romans 10 and 4. Romans 10 and 4. We're going to do some scriptures this morning. Is that okay? Romans 10 and 4. Romans 10 and 4. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you still with me this morning? I want you to be with me this morning. Stay with me. Romans 10 and 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Do you see that? Here's the end of the law. So be stable and be consistent. Believe in him. Do you see that? For Christ, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that would believe it. He has the last say so, not the world. He has the last say so. Do you see that? Number two. Number two, write this down. Oh, you have to do some writing this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at this. Your faith. Listen to this. Your faith follows your focus. Your faith, my faith, it follows our focus. It determines how stable you are. Or how stable you will be in your walk with God. Do you hear that? Your faith follows your focus. It determines how stable you will be in your walk with God. He says, fear not. Don't be dismayed. Don't be unstable. What you focus on. What you give Give focus to what you give attention to. It becomes a reality to you. Do you hear that? It becomes a reality to you. What you give focus to, what you continue to feed, it becomes a reality. It gets deep down inside. And now it begins to grow and sprout. And now you believe that's what it is and how it should be. But it's not how it should be. So your faith follows your focus. It determines how stable you are in your walk with God. Turn to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. It determines where you are and how you're going to walk with God. James chapter 1. Hallelujah. Glory to God. James chapter 1. And the eighth verse. And James tells us these things. Let's go to five. James chapter one, verse five. Remember, we say your faith follows your focus. It determines how stable you, how stable your walk will be with God. Are you there in five? Look at this. It says, if any of you lack what wisdom, don't go ask the government. Don't go ask your neighbor. Don't even ask your wife or your husband, your grandmother, grandfather. He says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Do you see that? Ask God. Where's your focus? It will determine your walk. With God, what are you focused on? It determines your walk. It determines your stability. It determines your mindset. It determines your outlook. It determines your steadfastness. Do you see it? It determines your consistency. It determines your faith and ability to move forward in the things that God has called you to move forward in. Do you see that? It says, again, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all. Do you see it? He don't just, oh, no, you can't get it. Uh, you can't get it. No, I'm going to sprinkle it over here. No, he says to all men liberally. That means without anything, liberally. And unbread it not, and it shall what be given him. But let him ask what? In faith. Not wavering. Do you see that? Not wavering. For he that what? For he that what? Waver. For he that waver is like a wave of the sea. Do you see? A wave of the sea. That means the wave of the sea go different ways in different directions. That's unstable. Unstable. But let him. But let him in faith. 
not wavering, for he that wavered is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Do you see that? Driven with the wind and tossed. So what we focus on, it determines how stable we will walk with God. What are we speaking out of our mouth? It determines how we trust God. Do you see that? And then he goes on to say, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Anything. God doesn't, he, I mean anything. You know what anything mean? Anything, nothing, zero. You can't trust them. You can't count on them. Where are they? When you look around, no one's there. When they should be there. Do you see that? What are you focusing on? It goes back to your faith follows your focus. It determines how stable you will be in your walk with God. He didn't say your walk with Pastor Simmons. He says your walk with God. And if you're walking with God, then I know you're stable to walk with me because I'm walking with God and I got stability. It's stability. Do you hear it? And then he goes on to say, this is good now. Don't run away. Don't turn it off. Don't close your book. And then he says in verse 8, a double-minded. Double-minded man is what? Unstable in all his ways. No stability. A double-minded man is unstable. It's not just a man, it's humanity, male and female alike. They double-minded. They say one thing, then they do another. Do you see that? That means they're unstable in their ways. Can you trust somebody that's not stable in their ways? You can't trust anyone that's stable in the way. Then God can't trust you to give you the desires of your heart. Then God can't enlarge your territory. God can't embroaden your horizon because you're being unstable. Why are you unstable? It's some fear that's settled in somewhere. And it gravitated because of your focus. And what are you focusing on? Do you see that? And it brings you to being unstable and not stable in the things of God. You're being tossed to and fro by every wind word of doctrine. By all the wind, this wind blows, you lean this way because there's no stability. Because you're not focusing. He says, look to the hills which cometh thy help, and thy help comes from the Lord. He says, the Lord is my strong tower. He is my strength. When I'm fear, I run to him in safety. You're safe with God. You're safe with God. Now turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Glory to God. We're doing an excursion this morning. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And it goes with the same. Are you there? And then it says, we... That we hence be no more. Do you see that? That we henceforth be what? No more. Uh-uh, we ain't finna be unstable no more. We finna walk in the stability of God, knowing that he is our strong tower. We're not gonna be dismayed, confused. We're not gonna be unfocused. Do you see it? Hello, are you there with me this morning? Do you see it? He says that we henceforth be no more children. Do you see that? Ephesians 4 and 14. Ephesians 4 and 14. Excuse me, Ephesians 4 and 14. I want you to see this. And then we're going to go to the Message Bible and we're going to read the Message Bible after that. Are you there now? It says that we, do you see that? Not just me, not just one, but he's talking about the believers, the one that's want to be stable in Christ, that we don't be dismayed, walking in instability, walking in fear and doubt. He says that we henceforth be no more 
children. That's useful for us, child, inexperienced. But God says, no, no, no more. The world has been treating you like children and you've been tossed to and fro. You've been unstable. And I am the stablest thing that ever can enter into your life. I have never changed. I have never stopped loving you. I have not provided for you. I have not stopped covering you. I have always been there when nobody else was there. I am God and I have always been there. I have never been unstable. But it says that here, right here, that we hence be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. That means teaching. What are you focusing on? What are you giving heed to? By the slight of men, by the slight of men, the slight of the world, false teaching, false prophets, false beliefs. Do you hear that? He says the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to what? Deceive. Deception. First lady taught us deception is settled. It comes real quick because it understands what you have a desire of. And it comes and it hits you real quick. And now you deceive thinking that it's good. It's not that good. It's not good because it's not God in it. Do you see it? And then it goes on. Let's go here. And 15 he says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. For us to be stable, we have to grow up. Do you see it? We have to grow up where? In Christ. We have to grow up in the word and in the will and in the way. And in the walk, do you see it? And in the worship, do you see that? We grow up in the will, we grow up in the way, we grow up in the walk, and we grow up in the worship of God. That keeps us stable because we're focusing on him that is able to present us for the only wise God that we serve with a seedly joy. It's joy for him to present us to the Father. <laughs> Glory to God. Do you see it? In the name of Jesus, glory to God. Now, let's go over in the message Bible and read uh, Ephesians 4 and 14. What does the message Bible read? Let's see how it read. It says, no prolonged emphasis among you, please. Do you see that? He said, don't prolong this thing. Emphasis among us, please. Will not tolerate babies in the woods. Small children who are easily mocked for impostors. God says it's time for you to grow up. He says you can't be easily mocked for impostors. I have poured the word of truth and life in you. I've given you what God says. I've given you what Jesus has done. I've told you the way of the apostles doctrine. I have given you every tool that you need. Why are you still being unstable and walking in fear? He says it right there. Easily marked for impostors. Because you're not exercising, God says, the stability that I've given unto you. You're not exercising the word of truth. You're not speaking it. You're not being like the hammer to the nail. <laughs> Glory to God. Somebody going to hear this this morning. And it's going to change your life. It's going to change your life and get you out of the gutter that the adversary, the prince of the power of the air, trying to keep you in the gutter. He wants to submerge you and drown you where you can't even see the truth of God's power and anointing that's up on your life in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Now write this down. Write this down. Being careful of what you're looking at and listening to. Focus on things that will help you be strengthened and walk with God. 
You got to be careful of what you're looking at and what you're listening to. Do you hear that? Whenever you become unstable, shift your focus. Whenever you feel fear come upon you, shift your focus. I can do all things through Christ and strengthen in me. For the word of God has all power. When you're feeling fear or you're feeling unstable, shift your focus. That's right. Change it and go on to Christ, who is the head of all things. Shift your focus. When people coming around you with negativity, shift your focus. That's right. That means shift your focus, shift the conversation. When people trying to deter you from believing and moving forward, what seems impossible to them, but you know it's possible with God, shift your focus. Shift your focus. When you know God has called you for greatness and called you to do what he called you to do, and people said that's impossible, you can't do it, shift your focus. Shift your focus. God wants us to shift our focus. What are you focusing on? Shift the focus. There's so much instability that's happening right now in society because we're not focused on the one that has the power to move it out of the way. That's why it says that he is the strong tower. He has the strength to overcome all things. He says that he overcame the world even by faith. He has power. And God says, I have given my son all power and authority in heaven and in earth and everything beneath the earth. He has the power to do it. Jesus does. Do you hear it? And he says, listen to this. It's not a matter that you will not become unstable. We will come to instability. Some fear will set up on each and every one of us. It's not that it's not going to happen. I'm not saying that you walk in. It's, it's going to come. But when it comes, you got to do it. Shift the focus. When it happens, what? Shift the focus. Immediately shift the focus. I'm not saying that it's not going to happen, that it's not going to come. It comes daily, sometime. And then you got to immediately shift your focus. You don't give thought to it. He says, think on these things above and not beneath. Our what? Conversation where it's in heavenly places. So shift your focus. Shift your focus. Just shift your focus. Let's go to Matthews 14. In the Bible, in the book of Matthew, chapter 14, let's pick the narrative up in the 25th verse. Matthew 14, glory to God. We're moving this morning. We're almost there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody say shift the focus. You got to shift your focus, my brothers and sisters, because what you're focusing on is only going to drain you. What you're focusing on is only going to keep you stagnated. What you're focusing on is not going to grow you. What you're focusing on is not going to span you. What you're focusing on is not going to give you the desires of your heart because God knows them that are his own. You got to shift your focus. The time is time, it's time out for being children. It's time out for being what? Being what? Uh, 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 as he said in, in, in the, uh, uh, Matthew, in the uh, message Bible that we're being prayed for what? The imposters. They know if you're stable. They know if you're unstable. They know if you trust. And then they're going to come with a word by every wind word of doctrine. They're going to smooth say you by cunningness and craftiness and get you out of the will of God. And now you're angry with somebody that is serving the only true living God because you're listening to them and you ain't heard a word from him. Do you hear it? He says, for the word I preach is not my own, but they are of they are of him. He says, if anything, he says, the word I preach is not my own, but they are of him who sent me. He says, if any man decide not to do his will, then he is not of God. That means you're not listening to him. You're listening more to them. 
the cunning, if the craftiness. And now it becomes unstable in your life. And fear begins to rise because you're focusing on the wrong thing. Do you hear it? Now you're mad at one another. Because you're moving and you're serving God. You're giving him praise. You're honoring him. You're worshiping him. You are knowing you adore him. And then you're listening to them because they tell you, who is that God? And you know who he is. But then you're listening to them. So now friction settles in. Things begin to happen. And now the joy of the Lord is not on the inside of you anymore. Do you hear it? Are you in the book of Matthew's gospel? Matthew's gospel. Glory to God. Glory to God. The 14th chapter of the book of Matthew's. We're going to pick it up there in the 25th verse. 14 and 25. 14 and 25. Glory to God. Look at this. Do you have that clip I sent you this morning? Did you check it? You didn't, you didn't, you didn't check it? Nothing came through. If you can, without interrupting, I'd like for you to find a uh, um, um, water cutting metal. And it's the one with the script that shows the lock being cut by water. It's powerful, brothers and sisters. You need to understand that God's word is the water. And, s and when we focus on the word, it can cut areas out of your life that's trying to hinder you. See, we can't take this lightly. And, and, and I, I, I just pray to God that we can get over the instability and the stagnant. The adversary trying to suppress what God wants to release. And we have to stay focused. You can't be unfocused in a time such as this. You cannot be. At no time should you be unfocused. You got to stay focused. You got to stay focused. Let me know. Give me a signal if you if you get that. Amen. Then I'll let you know when when to produce it. Are you there? Twenty five. And and this is about walking on water, but it's not the physical water. It's walking. On the word of God. Is walking without fear. Is walking being stable and consistent. In the word of God. Do you hear it? Look at this. It says. And in the fourth watch of the night. Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea. They were troubled saying. It is a spirit. And they cried out for what? Fear. They cried out for fear because they thought it was a spirit. Not recognizing who was able to walk on water. Glory to God. Look at this. But straightway Jesus spoke unto them saying, be of what? Good cheer. It is I. He says, be not afraid. Don't let, don't let anything cause you to be afraid if I'm with you. Don't be unstable. I told you I was with you. See, it all goes on to the level of your maturity. Do you believe what he is saying to you and has said to you? Do you believe what he has said about you? And he's keep talking about you right now. If Jesus stopped talking about us, we should be concerned. Do you see it? If he keeps talking about us, it should increase our stability and, and it should increase our courage and strength to keep moving forward. Then he goes on to say, 26 again, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were what trouble saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spoke unto them saying, be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water. See, we look at that and we look about the natural water. But it's not just the natural water. Even he was in the sea. He's not talking about that kind of water. The word of God is the water of life. 
Do you see it? The word of God is the water of life. The word of God is the pure thing that saturates your heart. The word of God is what keeps your eyes focused on him. It's the word of God. It's the water of the word. And then he goes on to say, and he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to Jesus. He walked on the word of God. See, being focused, it determines our walk with God. Being focused, it determines how stable we will be. Being focused on the word of God and the water that, light, that, that waters our life, it brings forth the fruit of God's word and the stability that we will live in. Do you see this? It changes the life. It changes your situation. It changes your outcome. It strengthens you to be stable. It causes you not to be weak. It causes you to be fruitful. It causes you to raise up. It gives you strength, and strength is for service. It calls you to be strong in the power of his might and the resurrection of his glory. Focusing on the water of the word. Do you see this? And then he goes on to say, 30, but when he saw the wind, the blistering, this is the situation. This is the unstableness, instability, looking around to see what you see with your natural eyes when you should be walking on the water of the word. It's your focus that determines your walk with God. Walking on the water of the word determines your outlook and the outcome that God will meet your needs of every situation in your life. It determines your joy. It determines your peace. It determines your gladness. It determines your hope. It's your fulfillment in God. Do you see this? It's the fulfillment in God. It's our fulfillment in God. When we walk on the water of the word and don't look at the situations around us, you can't move me. He says tossed to and fro. No, I'm not tossed to and fro because I'm walking and focusing on the water of the word, which strengthens me, which guides me, which leads me. Do you see that? He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. The word of God is with me. For thou were with me. You can leave me, but thou will be with me. You got to know this. You must understand this. And see the adversary, the prince of the power of the air, is trying to suck this out of all people that are not focusing on the water of the word. He says the word is like a hammer to the nail. And we so easily moved. And I believe some are moved because there are fear of releasing areas in their life that only God can change. Many are afraid and fearful for what God will see in them, but he won't expose it to nobody else but himself. And he wants to move it. That's right. He already knows, but he wants you to present it to him. Do you see that? Look at what he says. He goes on. He goes on. He goes on. He goes on. He said, but when he saw the winds blistering, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He carried. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. See, when we don't focus on the water of the word. We begin to be unstable. When we don't focus on the water of the word, we get entrapped and become prisoners of our own faults. And then we cry out to the Lord, Lord, save me. He's going to save you because he loves you. But then when he saves you, he's going to bring it to your remembrance. You need to walk on the water of the word. You need to read the word because the word of God is like a hammer to the nail that will get things out of your life. Quit being a child tossed to and fro. Do you see this? 
But we only want the good things. God, everything in God is good when he's telling you how to stand and how to live and how to move and have your being. He's teaching us how to be strong in a time like this. He's teaching us not to give in. Don't fall down. Stand up. Be strong and not be dismayed. Do you see that? Glory to God. Go to Luke real quick. I want to show you something. Go to Luke real quick. Luke chapter 9. Go to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. And I want to show us, I shared this here on the Wednesday night at a Bible teaching. I want you to see this though. This is like God says, I chose you. Remember he said, I chose you? I chose you. That means God says, I chose you to be on my team. I chose you to be on my team. You didn't choose yourself to be on my team. I chose you to be on my team. So where are you, team? Where are you, team? You're so unstable. To, you're always unstable. You're always out. You're never in the game. You don't come to practice. You don't come to rehearsal. You don't know the plays. And we're going left and you're going right. Where are you, team? Do you hear it? And then you get offended at God. Because God telling you to grow up and quit being a child. No, God says you can't be a child tossed to and fro. Look at what God says in his word. Look at what he says. Look at what he says. And, and start right there at 58. This is what he's talking to his disciples. Luke chapter 9, 58. Luke chapter 9, 58, and then we're going to get back to the water of the word. Because I want you to see how persistent when you focus on the word of God, which is the water of God, it can cut through anything. It cut through your problem. It cut through your pain. It cut through your agony. It cuts through the defeat. It cuts through everything that try to come up against you. Do you see that? Because you're focusing on the water of the word. Because you're consistent. You're consistent. Look at this. Jesus says, 58 and Jesus said unto them the foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests but the son of man have not where to lay his head and he said unto another follow me but he said Lord suffer me first to go and bury my father he said let me go and do this first before I follow you no Jesus said no I chose you for my team it's not time for you to go back and do anything. Practice is now. Rehearsal is now. It's now. Sense of urgency now. It's not time for you to go back. It's not time for you to say anything. It's a sense of urgency now. Don't go back. Mm -mm. Then he goes on to say, look at this. 60, Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury the dead. What does it say? It's the urgency. It says the urgency that you get it right. The time has arrived. I mean right now. It ain't time for you to go back. He says that will be the time when men, the dead men and women, will hear the voice of God. They already know. You don't got to go back and tell them they're dead. But if they want to come alive, they will hear the voice. See, a lot of people don't want to hear the voice of God. And they're dead if we're not serving the king of king and the lord of lord then you're not alive i'm telling you that right now you can stand you can call me you can text me but if you're not serving jesus christ who is the lord of lord and the king of kings you're dead you're dead you're dead bottom line you're dead well who are you to tell me no the bible says that it's in the word of god it's in the doctrine it's truth and God wants us to raise up and be the full army that he called us to be. Do you hear this, men and women of God? Look at this. Then he says again, 60. And Jesus said unto, Jesus said unto them, let the dead bury the dead. But go bow and preach the kingdom of God. He says, let the dead bury the dead. But then you need to go and preach the kingdom of God. Because the dead men and women, and they will begin to hear the voice of God if you go and preach. Don't preach to them because they're dead. 
You need to just go forward, and if they want to hear, their ears will be open to hear, and they'll come alive. They'll follow. But don't go sit amongst them because they're dead. Do you hear it? And then he goes on to say, and, and then he says, and another also said, Lord, I will follow thee. Okay, now you're saying you're going to come to the team. Okay, you're coming to practice. You're coming to rehearsal. You're going to do what's required. A lot says, Lord, say, you serve me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. Do you see that? When a situation arises or you get angry or, or something didn't go your way, then you fall out. Do you see that? God says, I'm looking at that. Are you sure you're ready for this team? I chose you for the team, but see, I need to know if you're really ready for the team. Don't just say with your lips you're ready for the team. I need to know where you are. Do you hear this? See, God is God know how to deal with us better than we know how to deal with ourselves. But when God deals with us, he really show he really shows us who we really are and what we really mean. Do you see that? Don't get upset at me as the messenger It's the word of God. Look at what he says, because he wants us to be strong. Because he made us in, the, in his image and likeness. And if we're in the image and likeness of God, we're strong. We're powerful. We got to get of our own mindset. And then he says, look at here. And another said, 61, Lord, I will follow thee. But, do you hear that? But always get in the way. So get your butt out of the way. Move it. Move it aside. He says, but let me first. Go bid them farewell. No, you join the team now. That's just like when I got in the army and I said, I'm going to the army. At wee wee hours, 4.30 in the morning, the recruiter came to my house. Picked me up in the white army recruiter car. I couldn't say, well, let me call my mom, let me call my grandmama, let me go see my auntie, let me go see my uncle before you take me. No. I joined the team. I joined the team. And it was ready to go and practice for the team. I couldn't go back. It was time right then and there to go and be a part of the team. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's not time to go back. You on the team. Because he said, I chose you. And of all the people in the world, I chose you to be on my team. So why are you going backwards? I need you to go forward. I need you to be consistent. I need you to have no fear, no doubt, and be dismayed. I need you to be stable and not walk in instability. I need you to be up and quit being down. I need you to be in and quitting being out. Do you see that? That's what he's saying. You're on the team now. Look at what he says. He says right here, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. Now, this is amazing to me. He had people at his house, right? He had people at home, right? He had to be at home too, right? So Jesus came in the midst of all the people at his house and in his home. But notice he didn't choose nobody else in the house and in that home. He chose one person out of that house in the home and he followed. Do you see that? Look at this. Look at this again. He says, and another said, I will follow. You. Everybody in that house didn't follow. They didn't say I will follow. So somebody's heart wasn't right to follow. So he says, in a house, in a great house, there are many vessels. Some of gold, some of silver, some of wood. Some of earth, some of honor, and some of dishonor. It was a lot of people in that house. But notice he the only one to say, I will follow. Excuse me. He the only one to say, I will follow. Do you see that? He the only one said that I will follow. So something had to touch his heart for him to even open up and say, I will follow thee. But see, we have to be careful. Be mindful. When you tell Jesus you join the team and you will follow him, you got to be fully ready. Because you don't know like he knows. He knows what the obstacles are ahead. You have to be focused and your faith has to be centered on the water of the word. Because that's going to bring you into the faith for the obstacles that are ahead. 
And if Jesus is with you and you're on his team, you think he's going to let you fail? He's not going to let you fail. Just like Peter walked on the water, but then he began to look at the obstacles around him and he began to sink. But Jesus, the coach, he's the trainer. He's the one that's going to make sure you're successful. He's going to make sure your outcome is great. He's not going to let you fall. He's not going to let you be prey. He's going to keep you up, keep you strong if you focus on the water of the word. I'm telling you that right now. And look at what he said. And Jesus said unto him, no man, this is humanity now. Jesus said, no man having put his hand to the plow. No man have joined my team. No man that have came to practice. No man that have come to rehearsal. No man that have come to serve. Look at what he says. And looking back. Is fit what? For the kingdom of God. He said you're not ready for this team. You're not sure about this. You always want to go back. You always got an excuse. But let me. No he says I am first. He says he's the first. He's not the last. He's the beginning. And he is the end. He says but well, you can't go and say but let me. Where's your focus? I chose you for the team. He says, you put your hand to the plow. You came and you, you checked it out. You touched it. You committed to this. You said you're going to operate and function here. You say you're going to run this ball five, five yards down the field, and then you're going to cut right. Now, practice zone, we're looking for you to run the play. Where are you? You know where to be found. You know where to be found. That's what he's saying. Look at what he said. He says, looking back. He says, why are you in the rearview mirror when your future is forward? He says, Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind. Press towards the mark what? Of the high call. Look to the future of what I want you to be. I chose you for this team. When I chose you for the team, there's greatness ahead of you. Do you see that? There's greatness ahead of you. There's greatness ahead of you. Now go back to uh, Matthew's, Matthew's gospel, and then we're going to show this clip, and then we're going to close. We're going to close right there. But I want you to see the water of the word. When you consistently focus on the water of the word, it can cut through anything. He says, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the vinyl asunder of soul and spirit. Soul and spirit. It says it get down to the joints and the marrow. And it says it's even the discerner of the heart and intents of what you are, what is bothering you. When you focus on the water of the word, it truly determines your walk with God. There's many obstacles that's in my way. But I have to stay focused on the water of the word. I can't let anybody that's not focused on the water of the word get me unfocused the way I become unstable. I become, well, let me go back and do this. No, no, no. I'm focused on the water of the word. Because as I stay focused on the water of the word, it's going to cut through whatever is trying to hinder. It's going to cut through. There is a breakthrough on the way. Because focusing on the water of the word, it get rid of the distractions. And my prayer to you is that you continue to focus on the water of the word and quit letting the distractions determine your outcome. It hinders what God has a desire to give unto you and enlarge you. It's not that you are better than no one, but you're focused. And don't be sluggish in your focusing. He says, when you focus on the water of the word, it gives you strength. And strength is for serving. Serving God the way that he should be served. Look at this. 
And it says in 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand. Are you there in 14? In 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him. He stretched forth his hand. Didn't he say he's a strong tower? And he says what? With the righteousness of his right hand. Jesus will never let us fall. When we fall, we fall because we want to fall. It's not because Jesus has let us fail. Because we focus on the water of the word, we will never fail. And it says that there. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore do you doubt that I am able to do what I said and proclaimed that I'm able to do? Do you see that? Focusing on the water of the word. I want you to focus on this. Look at this. Look at this clip. This is water. Look at this now. Look at this. Look at, look at, the, look at the screen. This is water. Consistent. Moving forward. This is the water. And water represents the word of God. It is cutting through metal. Because of the persistency and the focus of the word. It cuts through anything and any obstacle that can get in your way, my brothers and sisters. Do you see that? And that's how the word of God is. When we focus consistently on the word of God, it cuts through our problems. It cuts through the pain. It cuts through the agony. It cuts through the defeat. It cuts through with trying to destroy us. Do you see that? Persistency, focusing on the water of the word of God, which brings power and joy in the name of Jesus. Do you see it? And I pray for those that are looking that you be stable and do not walk in fear. Fear brings instability in your life. Stability is of God. James tells us a double-minded man is unstable in his or her ways. But God says that he is the strong tower. And if you ever feel unstable, that you can run to him for safety. You're safe in the arms of God. And as it was with Peter, he walked on water. But it was not the natural water. He walked on the word of God. Because God told him come. And when God stretched out his hand for you to come. Believe it or not. You be consistent and persistent in the word of God. It can cut through your problems. If you focus on God. And not on the situation. It can cut through voices that you think you're hearing because it will cut them out and it will open up a pathway to hear the voice of God. He says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He says the word of God is like a hammer to a nail. You begin to speak it over and over and over and over. Be persistent and then the manifestation of that which God speaks, it shall come to pass. So I pray those of you that do not know the Lord, I pray that you would accept him right now in your life. It says Jesus died for all humanity's sake. And he died for you. You may not have known him, but he known you. See, all souls belong to God, but not all are God. Unless you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and rose again. He chose you to be a part of his team and he wants the best for you in life. So I declare unto you that you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and that you receive salvation. The saving of your soul. 
And if you have fallen away or turned away because of instability or distractions in your life, Jesus says to us, all ye that are heavy laden and burdened down, come unto me and I will give you rest. I will release you from the struggles that you are facing in your life. Come back to me. Come back to me and I will show you the way. Because I'm the God of righteousness. There's safety in me. In the name of Jesus. And if you don't have a place to learn of him. Where you can be taught. The word of God. He says don't be tossed to and fro. By every wind word of doctrine. That means doctrine that is not of the apostle. That of Jesus Christ. We invite you to come to spoken word. We invite you to be a part of our ministry. We invite you to come sit and learn about Jesus where he will show you who you are in him in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. My prayer is for you to follow us on Facebook, follow us on YouTube, follow us that we follow him in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. We're located here at 15413 First Avenue Court South. That's Tacoma, Washington, 98444, Building H. You can contact us at www.jcswm.org. And you'll find a place if you desire to be a member of this congregation, of this powerful ministry that teaches the unadulterated word with consistency and persistency and a sense of urgency. That you may hear what God is saying to you. We invite you on e-join. E-join. Join e-join. E contact us and we will get back to you to give you more information. Also, we would like for you to partner with us. What does that mean? To sow into good ground. There are many different ways we have on our website that you can sow into the soil of God. That we may enlarge and build the kingdom of God. That we may meet souls in the community and abroad. You can follow us and you can look and you can sow into the ministry. Glory to God. And we pray that this day is a day that the Lord has made and that you should rejoice and that you be glad in this day that the Lord has made. I say unto you, until we meet again, Jesus is Lord. God bless you and to God be the glory. Amen and amen. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give them a hand praise. Glory to God.